Hi, this is Lisa Nash. I'm Lisa Nash. This is my co-pilot for the day, Chloe McLean. Hiya. Today we're working with some black Nara paper and we're going to be working with some Nara inks as well. As well as a uh, little bit of... Uh, well, no, I think it's just Nara inks today. No, we've got as well some jacquard pinata brass. I'm gonna as well remind you, although I am not wearing gloves, I'm gonna advise you to wear some gloves because inks can be toxic and they definitely stain. Please as well, do take some precautions, wear a mask. I am not wearing a mask because I'm talking through this, but I do have some ventilation going and I certainly advise, please do take some health precautions, wear a mask, be safe. So what's this that just went straight down? So this is blending solution, alcohol blending solution from Tim Holtz. You can use alcohol, 99 or 91 or higher percent isopropyl alcohol with most uh, alcohol inks. Because I am working with inks that have whites in them. These uh, Nara inks, they have white in them. They are pastels, so they are mixed with colors. If you're working on a black substrate, I, you're going to be needing to use white to have your inks show up. Um, so because I'm working with these whites, you really want to be using, whee, you really want to be using a blending solution. Uh, and a blending solution is something that's going to help those whites show up, though, help the whites blend, help the inks blend together, and uh, and they're gonna help those uh, those whites show up against the black. You can use, as I said, uh, isopropyl alcohol 91% or higher with whites. However, they don't work as well as a blending solution. Blending solution has glycerin and ethanol in it. So it helps those inks move more smoothly and blend together better. Now you're using regular non-pastel inks there to kind of tint those uh, whites. I am. It's gonna give them a lot more richness and darkness. Around the edges, you can see I'm keeping a lot more whiteness. I'm kind of going for a spacey uh, look here. My composition is going to be a bit of a space thing. So I'm, I'm keeping a lot more paleness around the edges and I'm adding a little more depth of color towards the middle because I do want a lot more richness of color in the middle. So I add a lot more color to that uh, to that uh, pastel ink to get more richness in the middle and I'm going to try and keep those uh, blending a little bit in the middle but not too much together so I'm going to uh, use this little uh, hand pump as you can see that I've got from uh, Tim Holtz again it allows me to blend those things together with small puffs of air rather than large amounts of air like I might get from for example, a hair dryer or uh, an airbrush or, or canned air. Canned air. Canned air is a very cool uh, little tool to use. Please keep the straw with it because uh, that will give you a lot of directionality. Um, but canned air is a lot of fun to use. The hand pump can be tiring on the hand. Uh, but I do fairly small pumps with my hand uh, and I give myself a rest. I can switch from hand to hand uh, if I want to. As you can see there, I do. Um, but uh, it, uh, it gives me a lot of control so I can fade out those edges uh, and give it a little more direction into the middle. As you can see, I, I want that middle to mix, but not too much. I'm just fading out the edges there, blending the middle just a little bit, not too much, getting a bit of a line in there. So this takes a little bit of time just gently going through it, easily blending out the edges. As this goes along, I'm thinking about what I want to do next with the with the metallics. 
because I know I'm going to add some metallics in here towards the end of the process. And I'm thinking about where I want to lay those metallics out in order to get the impression that I need to get. So here I'm going to come in with the metallic and if I can remember correctly, yep, it gets a little cloggy there. So I'm going to put the lid on before I shake because I've made this mistake before of trying to shake up a little bit of ink without the lid on and bang, ink is everywhere. I do recommend people maybe keep a, a sewing needle or a pen about because it does help to unclog those tips of the uh, of the ink bottles. So I've laid the metallic down along the center line because I know I want to move it out towards the edges. And laying it along the center line lets me blow it out along out towards the edges. If I wanted it to go back towards the center line, I'd have to put it out along the edges so I could pull it back towards the center line. And you're able to move it because of the uh, the blending solution that you've got it down. It's it's floating on top of the blending solution right now. Exactly. I've still got enough blending solution to move it right now. Metallics do also need blending solution. They're quite heavy. They contain things like mica and metallic bits in them so they they do tend to be heavy and they tend to fall through other inks so they need blending solution for that floatiness that 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 blending solution gives so it's best if you have some blending solution to work with them you'll note now i have laid some blending solution into the kind of clumpy bits that i had so that i can move them better and you'll see that the blending solution actually kind of breaks through the ink a little bit so I have to be aware when I am ever adding blending solution or alcohol to a piece, I'm going to be breaking through my inks a little bit. Um, and you can see I'm pointing that out, how that breaks through and how that moves those metallic chunks quite a bit. So it will create textural components for you so you can be aware of that and play with it a little bit. Learn how those blending solutions work with different inks for you because they will work differently with different inks. They're going to work differently with whites, with colors, metallics. And it works differently on different um, paper types. On this synthetic paper, mm -hmm. they it, gives, it does cut all the way through back to the substrate. It does. It cuts through really, really nice and deeply to that that uh, to that substrate on the Nara paper. Um, some other papers stain more, so Yupo stains a little more deeply. And uh, when you put down a, a a a drop, you might not cut right the way through. You might still have colors where they're staining. So again, it's it's a matter of trying it out. So in this little syringe here, I have. 99% isopropyl alcohol. Again, we're looking at um, what this is going to do is cut through the ink when I lay it down. And I, I'm looking for a textural component here. So this is a really directed line that I'll get out of it because it's got quite a small tip on it. Um, so I can get quite a, quite a direct line or a direct drop out of it. From that little point and the alcohol cuts through the blending solution the ink everything and goes really right down and the syringe gives you a lot of control it gives me complete control so I can lay that drop there and it cuts right down into the substrate and that directional spray that I can get it gives this amazing line and that cut through I get this glow almost from that look it's a very popular image what else needs to be done for this to be done so at the end of this I'll do a couple of layers of uh, varnish on top of it a UV protectant varnish a camar preferably nothing with alcohol in it because you don't want any alcohol to reactivate your ink there you go. It'll get nice and shiny. Put a gloss varnish. No alcohol varnishes. It'll be nice. Perfect.